And I just wanted to be known that I came clean about the situation to not only Craig Ronald Williams Sr., but to also to Ronaldo LaShawn Clark. Yes, I did. Because I tried to bring peace to the situation. But in the meantime, in between time, Ronaldo's girlfriend got a hold of information through his daughter, Ariana Clark, that she had a possible brother because she was around and she was pregnant at this time when this was going on. So Letitia Scott at the time is who Mr. Clark was dealing with, took it upon herself to either question Ariana or however it transpired. But Miss Scott wound up in my messenger asking me, do I have a baby daddy named man? And I corrected him that, yeah, that's my child's father. The, the paternity wasn't established at that point in time. But if you take a side-by-side -side picture, and this is not no Maury moment, my son looks exactly like Mr. Clark. There's no denying that. And if you take the picture with Craig Ronald Williams Sr., Ronaldo LaShawn Clark, and Marquise Rashawn Williams, and you put them together, and you will clearly see that Ronaldo is Marquise's biological father. I went to the situation because I first got reconnected with Mr. Clark based off of him leaving Job Corps through Facebook Messenger after I had gotten myself self clean in Philadelphia where I was residing at that time to reach out and, and start me a Facebook account so that I can first and foremost get reconnected with my family because as I said, I was out there in the street just like smoking and doing, you know, and, and it, it had a hold of me and it was not having me operate, operate out of my higher self of who I know I'm to be, especially being a mother, not only to my children, but to myself. So, you know, between myself and their father, somebody had to get clean. And it was me. But like I said, in the meantime, in between time, I reached out on, I sent a friend request. Mr. Clark, But I believe it was September of 2016, if I'm not mistaken, that he reached back out to me and I explained who I was first and foremost. The experience that we had together because we were cool and we hung out before we even was intimate. So we talked about a lot of things, you know what I mean? And you, we had started building a rapport together. So I've, and I've never had any ill will or malice towards this gentleman or any, like, I, with Craig I, either. Craig's put his hands on me. Ronaldo has never, you know. But Craig has put his hands on me based off of his insecurities of the lack of what it is that he didn't have within him. But Craig knew my truth as well. Because when I wasn't around while he had Marquise in his care, I was out there in the streets battling for my life. And I overcame that for me to be right here right now. But let me finish talking about this Ronaldo and Craig situation. So after Miss Scott finds out this information, she takes it upon herself to reach out to Mr. Williams through Facebook Messenger to discuss because at that time he went back to her because I, from what we, myself and Ronaldo discussed once I got back in contact with him because I was going to go visit him in West Orange, New Jersey, 39 Washington Street. His mother, Rosemary Clark's uh, uh, apartment. Weekends. We spent Thanksgiving there, and we also spent Christmas there. We were there at one point for a long, like almost a month. A month's time. Because Mr. Clark was going through some things emotionally because his mom is in a rehabilitation center and they were telling him that his mom was getting ready to pass away. 
So I have a heart. I have compassion. Like, I wanted to be there for him. Mr. Clark had proposed to me as well. I don't know what the situation was between himself and Miss Scott, but from the things that he shared with me, it wasn't all that great. But through emails and texts, it was denied. So I can't prove what was said face to face, but I know my truth. And if I'm woman enough to tell another man the truth, because you have a lot of women out here that wouldn't even be bold and courageous enough to come out of their mouth. That's one of my dying before I died wishes was to be able to speak my truth to both gentlemen and to make peace with this within myself. I've carried a lot of guilt. I carry a lot of shame, remorse, anger based off of my parents not being available for me based off of their life. But through my growth process, I learned how to forgive. I really did. Now, the thing that strikes me with Mr. Williams' family, you know, I know that Letitia, being a woman, you know, that did something to her because at that time, I was told that they were together for a, a long period of time, like uh, some years. But I didn't know at, until she told me through uh, the messenger that they were together almost 10 years, I believe, as she said in my email. I, did, I wasn't even aware of that. So that means that through that situation that I had with Mr. Clark, there was deception there. There was lies because I said, okay, I still love you. I've, I've always, you know, felt the attack attachment to the gentleman, Mr. Clark, based off of the vibe that he had. And it wasn't a fatuation. I wouldn't say it was a fatuation. I really like had like for myself a connection. So I couldn't understand it when I'm emailing, I get some nice replies and then I'm starting to get like nasty replies. And then the way the emails were coming in at that point in time, based off of me having conversations with Mr. Clark face to face, the text messages didn't even match up to what was being typed through the messages back to me based off of what I know Mr. Clark's response would, 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 would have been. I'm not quite sure all the way through and through about a lot of other things that weren't talked about between myself and Mr. Clark, but I know that he went through some tumultuous things growing up. I do know that. He has shared that with me. So for... It to be denied through text and emails, it raised an eyebrow and suspicion to me because what I'm saying can't clearly be wrong. I didn't get it out of nowhere. I can't prove like certain things that he said, but what I can prove is what was said that raised another suspicion with me after these conversations that took place between um, Miss Scott, Letitia Scott, and uh, Ronaldo Clark and Mr. Craig Williams. What I do know is is that she was upset, very much so upset and pissed off. And what she said was, and I quote, I got papers on him. If anything happened to him, I got papers on him. And I addressed that as well in the email. And I said, when he asked me, why would I say that? And I'm saying to him, like, where would something like that come from? That don't even sound like something that was a part of this conversation. Why would she say, why would she say that if anything happened to anything happened to him, I, I got him on papers? That doesn't make any sense to me because on papers, on papers means that either you're married. You have life insurance. If anything happens to him, because Mr. Clark had made me aware that he had ankylosing spondylitis. So I looked it up and I did my research on it. And I'm like, dang, wow. You know what I mean? Like he expressed to me a lot of things. I've given this man massages to help him ease his pain. I watched this man cry himself to sleep at night because he was in so much pain. So... I'm not quite sure 
I'm not quite sure about a lot of things, but I do know that Mr. Clark was taking a lot of medications. And at that time, he was saying that it was for pain and things of that nature. And because, you know, I didn't feel a need to guard myself, I didn't check, like, pill bottles. Because it's a lot of things. Like, I have taken numerous tests and things like that, and my health has been intact. So... There's been slander, gossip, and rumors about me having um, STDs and spreading them and all of these things. Yes, I have had STDs in my past. Yes, I have. Based off of my lifestyle. And the first STD I had came from not me selling my body, but just being out there promiscuous at a younger age. Not really like out there, out there in the streets, but you know. Certain few people that, you know, I took interest to. Yes, I've had relations. So, that was that. But for me to purposely and maliciously go and try to hurt somebody, I don't want to do that. I don't want to do that. So, I'm not sure of how I wound up getting gang stalked. My phone tapped. People parked outside in the back of my building like I'm not aware of what's going on. Certain suspicious cars being in the parking lot next door when the business clearly closes between 9 and 10 o'clock, 10 p.m. when that whole plaza next to my house shuts down. Why is it 12, 1, 2, 3 o'clock in the morning? Suspicious vehicles just sitting in that parking lot with people in them, mind you. People meeting up. This can be proven as well if you just go check the beautiful bean footage cameras that are on this plaza mall here. About the weird suspicious activities that have been transpiring. As well as the black car with the tenant windows that has been parked in that same parking lot. But further where the, where the gate is at. Where the gate is at, parked directly outside of my daughter's bedroom. This same black car was at the top of the parking lot when I went to the store. But everybody, as soon as I got ready to go out my door to go to the store, and this particular gentleman that was driving, I think Timothy was the one that was driving the, the vehicle, and Benji was getting into the passenger side of the vehicle. They sat there for a minute because I stopped. Because I wanted them to go out the parking lot. So I stopped. And they sat there for a while. And at this time, like, they could have started pulling up. If they were going out the parking lot like they eventually did, they could have started making an attempt to go out this parking lot. But instead, they sat there and they watched me watch them. And then I just started looking up at the sky like, are these people really sitting here thinking that I don't know that they are watching me and that they have been plotting to harm me. And I know that the Denver police are aware of this because y'all also plotted to harm my child. There have been death threats and sublim subliminal threats from the gang members downtown telling my son where he can go and where he can't go. In front of Union Station, let's take this back to uh, the 14th, I believe, of July, or was it June? It's one of those days. If I'm not mistaken, it was June. June 14th, to be exact. Yeah, June or July. It's on camera as well, in front of Union Station. Myself, my child, and two gentlemen that were dressed in all red. My son was scared to go outside of the Union Station to continue on with his travels because he was threatened. He called me. Mommy, can you just come get me away from here? I'm like, where are you at? I'm in Union Station. What do you mean come get you? What's up? Why you can't leave? I can't. They, they not trying to let me leave up out of here. And I'm like, who's not trying to let you leave up out of here? He was like, Mommy, could you just please come get me? So I stopped what I was doing. I called me a lift. And I proceeded downtown. I proceeded downtown to go see about where my child was at. 
When I get to the Union Station, I'm looking, looking, looking. Go down underneath the tunnel. My son is on the other side where the where the uh, in, where the exit is going out the door. I'm talking to my son. He's telling me, you know, there's some people outside that are, uh, you know, that, that 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 are pretty much telling him like, yo, you can't be over here. You got to get the f out of here and all of this stuff. So we go outside and I just start asking people, who has this problem with my child? Who really has this problem with my child? Like, what is the what is what is the problem? Like, why my my son can't go and do and be free of who he wants to be? Who gives you that right? So when I walk around to the front of the Union Station that faces the, uh, I believe that's Whole Foods. We were standing there, but I'm facing the doors to the Union Station. And it's those two, it's two gentlemen <clears throat> that are dressed in red. One heavier set guy and one shorter gentleman with a ponytail with some shave, with a shaved side. Hispanic, Mexican of that descent. <clears throat> the gentleman says to me, I got a problem with him. And I said, and I turned to him and you can see the motion on the cameras who I turned to and asked the question to. And then you also will see that we're all standing there. And then the one, the, the heavier set gentleman said to my, said to my son, I will shoot you in front of your mother. And if you see my body movement, you'll see me lean in and turn towards him. I said to the gentleman, you're going to do what to who? In front of who? Because prior to that, I was trying to get to the bottom of where the, what, the, what the discrepancy was with my son. And as this, call, this, this, this conversation is transpiring, the little short guy is paranoid talking about oh y'all are snitches y'all are snitches i'm like snitches ain't nobody trying to snitch on nobody i'm his mother trying to figure out what it is what the problem is so that i can let y'all know like we not doing that y'all not about to sit here and tell my son how he can maneuver because nobody is telling you how to maneuver now if you're down if you're down there outside of union station selling drugs and doing whatever it is that you do that's your business if my if my son was down there doing whatever, I that's not my business. I didn't know anything about a whole lot of other stuff that was going on. But I do know that after that incident, my son started opening up to me and telling me about the things that these people was like trying to have him do as far as selling of their drugs and running the running sales and things like that for them, being wired while these things are going on. Had paying uh, Wayne, I'm not even sure of what his name is, but I know he drives a black Range Rover. Having Wayne uh, have him sell pills and stuff like that. All of these other crazy things <coughs> that they tried to have my son wrapped up into. Nobody talks about my son trying to help somebody and save their life. Or all the other things, the good deeds that my son did. They're only looking about what happened in his past. And my son couldn't have been that much of a frick up. Because in his youth, he had gotten into a lot of trouble. I'm trying to figure out how is it that he got into all of that trouble, right? Just to turn around and be able to get a MED badge, which is government affiliated. It's the industry. The industry also has many umbrellas and many branches to it in its entirety. So, <clears throat> all of these things, I had to pause it just to talk to my daughter for a second. But it's like, why? What's the rhyme or reason? Because the only reason why I can think that if if Ronaldo and Letitia and Craig had anything to do with these um acts, okay, Craig would be upset. His motive and the motive behind why I'm saying what I'm saying as far as the setups, the motives, the murder, all of this stuff is because of the fact that I exposed that, that gentleman 
may or may not have been the father of my child. And I was willing to pay at that time when I first addressed the situation with Mr. Clark. I was willing to pay for the paternity test to get it done between myself, Mr. Williams Sr., Craig Williams Sr., and Marquise Rashawn Williams. And myself, if I had to have my mouth swabbed. I was willing to come out of pocket and pay that fee. I was I was willing to do that. Everybody knows it. It wasn't a secret. Because that's how determined I am to get to the bottom of the truth. And it says in emails and everything like that, I wish you no harm. I wish her no harm. I just want for the truth to be exposed and that everybody is that's, that was involved in this can know the truth. And we can move forward from there. I've expressed my love to him because that's just what's in my heart. It wasn't, I'm oh, I'm reaching out to him so that I can do this and do that. So, that's not credible. But what I do know is, based off of the maliciousness and the intent, because I had also stated to Miss Scott while she was communicating with me in Messenger, that I did not want to jeopardize my child's safety by having this thing come out the way that she brought it out. Because now, myself and my children's safety are at stake right now. Miss Scott also said to me before I even came here to Colorado, because before I moved here to Colorado, I resided in Salem, New Jersey. And I know it's a lot of crazy stuff that's tied to that as well, but it might have something to do with it. It might not. With my mom and her with her crazy antics because she didn't want me to leave from Salem. You know what I mean? She tried to have me on this paper. Like, we agreed before we left from Asbury Park because she had to move that so that my children can have a place to stay. I was willing and did go and share share custody with her so that she would be able to have my children reside and have a stable roof over their heads. My mom wanted to dictate, dominate, and control me. And when she couldn't do that, my mom started doing manipulative tactics. I know she did because she was angry and upset that she couldn't control me because I said that I was leaving. At that time, I was like about to be 40, I was 38, about to be 39. Mom, seriously, I'm about to be 40 soon. I'm, I was ever so humble and appreciative of her opening up her door when I decided that I didn't want to get high anymore and that I went to heal myself. Because, see, when I moved from Philadelphia, I didn't go into a drug treatment program going to Asbury Park. I was detoxing and have continued to do so and abstain from crack cocaine. And any other harmful drug. See, marijuana is not a drug. It's it naturally, because I spoke about it earlier in this recording, I am of Native American descent. And if you guys really did your, you know, your your research, you would know that that was a part of healing the people. That's why y'all made it illegal. So we wouldn't be able to heal and connect to our higher selves. To be able to discern situations like these. So because of all of the generational perpetual lies, trickery, deceit, manipulation from all of the hierarchies and uh, whoever is involved, the umbrellas, the branches, the entities, the third party entities, the extended, you know, all of the things that you know that I know what I'm talking about. I don't even want to address that like that. But you guys are well aware of what I'm saying. Y'all trying to keep us perpetually 
in this cycle of monetary gain. You see, because I'm also aware of how y'all get paid through the contract that y'all sign. And don't let a person sign to the industry when it comes to music. I'm also aware of what you guys do, the the, the practices, the rituals, the sexual um, rituals that you guys do. I'm not I'm not against the LGBTQ community. And I know it was like two other letters. I apologize, guys. No disrespect. But I'm also aware of that aspect of it as well. And how more of that gets perpetuated through those acts, through the manipulation, through the murder magic, through the child exploitation. I'm aware how y'all people in the musical industry, Hollywood, Holly Weird, on all levels, the models, the actors, actresses, them all, TV stations, broadcast stations, radios, it's really sickening and pathetic. That y'all can stand for that, but allow injustice. That shows how really selfish, selfish you guys really are. Because y'all don't care about nobody but yourselves. And that's the sad part about it. When you have a person like me that came from all of that. The money manipulation, all of that. Y'all killing people that y'all know are sent here for a specific purpose, but y'all want them to be quiet and don't tell about what you had them sign on to. Really? Really, I got the nerve and audacity. So you see, I'm considered lower class. No, I'm not even in the middle class. Like when they, when you guys do your your ranking, your number system, how you classify us, the numbers, how y'all stole our birthright. And manipulated it over the water. Through our birth certificates. Are you serious? And our social security cards. Y'all sold us out. Y'all are continuously trying to sell us out. For a dollar. And you want to trade spirits. Spirits that God put here. For a purpose. For a fucking purpose. How fucking selfish. And how dare you. How dare any of you. Continue to want to perpetuate this. Let's talk about the freaking. Film. I'm going to go to my son's case right now. My son is under. Uh, court. You know, jurisdiction, reporting for court. The unfair treatment based off of the video alone, and then they're only giving angles. You guys are only giving angles from what y'all want people to see. Ain't no dummy. I took a trip down there myself and took my own pictures. Of all of these cameras that have been placed on outside of this business, all of these businesses that are in that area. On the 16th Street Mall, from the Walgreens angle, from the Planet Fitness angle. Yeah, all of those angles that have these cameras that are placed there for the safety and protection. And not only that, <laughs> there's cameras everywhere that you can zoom for miles. 
technology is so awesome and so superb. So I know when my child told you his part of the story of where he was coming from, it started at the station that's right there by the Walgreens on the 16th Street Mall. I've taken pictures of all of those cameras from the time where he would be able to get off of the light rail and be seen to the camera that's right at the cross the street side facing where my child walked and where the incident took place. And it will clearly show that there were a group of young men, I want